Welcome to What's Your Screw, where we tell stories, share experiences, and get inside the minds of artists, athletes, creators, and musicians. So, a Fall deer, back in your chair. a female deer. Um, what's that actually used for? Falsettos. What's a falsetto? Can we find out what that's used for? Dory Farso Mi Latin. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 29 of What's Your Screw. We're back. In the studio, You're yelling, huh? You sound really loud. I always come out way too strong. Like when I'm editing the podcast afterwards, mm-hmm. like I start the show, and I feel like everyone has to turn their volume down, and then I have to turn it right back up because I always yell. It's tons of energy. Well, we call that in grammar and English a uh, oh my. conundrum. It's no, when you it's... start a sentence with a bam, pow. What's uh, start to the C? Can I don't know I'm thinking like it's I don't not a conundrum, but. I don't know if he has like a sound. Oh, we have Coop back, our intern Cooper back. Yeah, he's back. He's in the studio. He was actually, uh, he's yeah, anyway, sorry for, for yelling at the beginning of every episode. That's just high energy. I'll take the high energy. Um, he, Conjuncture? Conjecture? No. It's a, I don't want to pee as a sound word. Like bang, boom, pow. Oh, is it? Right, Coop? I don't want to pee. Cooper said, yeah, so you're an idiot. Um, I thought when you started a <laughs> sentence with a certain thing, it's called, uh, when you start a sentence with like boom. Or pow. What's is that, is that onomatopoeia? Is there a is literary it? term for that? We have Cooper fact checking. Anyway, so Cooper came down yesterday. Um, he's going into his senior year of high school uh, this fall. Like, when, when does school start for you? September 1st or something like that? Okay, end of August. His senior year. So, like most young Americans at that point in their life, he's trying to figure out what he wants to do. Mm. So he came to uh, hang out with us the last couple of days, see what it's like. Somewhat, of, somewhat of a job shadow. Somewhat if of you a will. job shadow, or an internship that lasted two days, or a um, <laughs> just follow your dumb brothers around. I know it ain't all what you see in the vlogs. There's so much going on in the trenches. I I bought him a metaphorical trench shovel from World War II when he showed up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so he's been with us, so he's, he's monitoring this podcast for us, but, um, it's going to be back in the studio. Mm. What, when's the last one we did here? Nina? I guess we did Nina pretty yeah. recently, but we haven't done one of our shows. Have we ever done a show just me and you in the studio? Yeah, I think we've done a couple when we started doing the podcast again weekly with me and you. The first one was in the studio. Was it? it just feels Remember, like we haven't had this one. We're trying on. to figure out the chairs. Oh yeah, I think we did it once. We just—I just feel like we haven't had this one in one in uh-uh. like some time. Well, uh, in the we did it with Lexi the week b- last week, and then we did it with Nina or uh, Gina the week before that. Yeah, and, and then the week before that while. was I think we were in the van. Yeah, these chairs. I just love doing a podcast in these chairs. Our mom and dad got us these chairs mm-hmm. as a housewarming gift because uh, they said they'd be great because we were using them in the podcast at home. Yes, they bought them and we were using them there, and then they said. It was a it was a planned gift because we were moving out and mm. I that, what a good gift, great it, podcast chair. Everybody needs a good armchair. It really can <sighs> good thinking. Let, chair. It can help you think. good reading. Good chair. reading chair. Um, well, careful your chair's right there. Yeah, that's my that's my real in depth. That's your chair. thinking chair. This is more of a conversation yeah. chair. You yeah. want to talk to somebody? I let anybody sit in this. Yeah, chair. Yeah, but you want to get into some. Kenny's got a smelly old chair right there <laughs> that was left in this room because when they added this drywall piece right there, we figured out that they didn't leave it because they didn't want it. They left it because they couldn't get it out the door. So yeah, then Mitch and Lexi said that it was actually in their apartment. And I think you can just take the legs off and you can fit. Oh, it so to that's the door. not true. Yeah, they told us that that one time. Really? Because I was like, oh yeah, that thinking chair down there. I couldn't sneak out of my room. They said, oh, I think that was actually upstairs. I love how they we stuffed it down it. here. <laughs> I know. Like they wouldn't even. They didn't even bother putting it in the trash. Pawned it off on me. Uh-huh. Jokes on them. <laughs> Guess who had a bunch of good thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> Not them. There were so many ideas in that thing uh, that hadn't been surfaced yet. I kind of just around around the back of it is like a little uh, Professor X cerebral cortex thing that connects <laughs> to the back of my brain. Cerebral. I plug in. Is it cerebral? Is that the name of the thing? Cerebro, Cerebro, probably. Cerebro. Cerebro. Yeah. Oh, nice. So I download all my thoughts into that chair sometimes. That's disgusting. <laughs> I, yes, it is. <laughs> it uh, is unhackable, I think. <laughs> I uh, hope. So. That would not be good. Discover Weekly. Yeah. Okay, Discover Weekly. For those of you who aren't regular listeners, be regular listeners. No, just, <laughs> uh, Discover Weekly is a little Don't. segment. <laughs> yeah. A little segment where we discuss something that we've bought, purchased, watched, listened, experienced uh, in recent time uh, that we've enjoyed that maybe somebody else could enjoy. Mm-hmm. Do you want to go first? Mm-hmm. 
Yes, I can go first. I was trying to think what I wanted to do this week because I didn't put a lot of thought into it. And then I was like, what do I use all the time? And it's provided a lot of value in my life. Can I guess? What? Is it your notebook? No, I already did that. Did you? Come on. Dude, well, I, I said I did my five minute journal, which I do in my notebook. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so that didn't really count. Calm down. I'm going to put Because the five minute you. journal <laughs> is a, a, a byproduct of the notebook, if you will. But this Here is my Bose SoundLink 2. Bum, bum, I got bum. my wireless or my Bluetooth <laughs> Bose speaker. I yeah. love it. Use it all the time. I asked for it for Christmas. I think last year. Are you talking about our van stereo? Yeah. Well, this is the thing. In college, we had like the the Bose Sound Deck Series 2, which we used all the time. I mean, that thing, I mean, it survived four years of college. Mm. Parties being blasted. And that thing still like pumps out great music. Mm. So incredible product. We should have one of those just for our parties. What? We do. We have two. I have mine here. But we don't use it for our parties here, do we? No, because you have to plug your phone in. Nobody wants to plug their phone in. That's yeah. the downfall. It didn't have Bluetooth. Yeah, well, Bluetooth wasn't big. big when we bought it. It wasn't like... Because and the other thing, people weren't buying Bluetooth speakers because I feel like phone batteries weren't as good mm. and it would drain your phone battery, mm. but now it kind of mm-hmm. came full... Anyway. So I asked for this speaker because Cooper actually had one and I like how compact it is. It's, it's small. It's maybe like eight inches by six inches. So I guess it's pretty big if you think about it. Um, and it fits right in your backpack. <laughs> If it's right in your backpack, can fit right in a duffel bag. Yours is black, right? Yeah, you can carry it anywhere. It's yeah. the color sound link. It comes in a bunch of different colors. But it's like eight hours full charge. <laughs> <laughs> and, it'll, uh, and, it, and it actually makes a great van stereo. Yeah. Because our van, our van. I doesn't have a way to plug in and play my uh, like Bluetooth off my phone. So it only will do just regular radio, AM, FM. See, but we find inspiration in everything because I want to write a song based off that stereo system. My bows? No, the van stereo. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, there's inspiration everywhere, but yeah, Kenny's bows. It's okay. Well, I use it every single day. I play music twenty four seven. Like you know, I how much? What's the price? Music, Can I get a price? It's one hundred and thirty. I didn't ask It's one twenty nine ninety nine on Best Buy. One hundred and thirty. Can we get a verification? It's a great deal. It's shock proof. It's water resistant. Can take it to the beach. I've traveled with it. It's great for photo shoots. Great in the van. Throw it right in my backpack and my duffel bag. Up to eight hours off a uh, full charge to listen to it, which is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Pumps out some decent sound. So I love that thing. My only complaint is I wish it was like Louder. a cylinder because like my Amazon tap is because then like when we're at photo shoots, you could put it in like your backpack in the drink holder. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? It would be because that. But, yeah. But then the, the, the cylindrical uh, uh, sonar of sound it is not as good as a uh, rhombus like that. <laughs> That's why yours is quieter than mine. It's one thirty. Okay, what's the price? Yeah, like point? I said, one thirty. Give me a price point on Amazon Tap. Amazon Untapped. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, is that Amazon's beer craft beer review? Yes. Name? Amazon Untapped. Amazon Tap. Uh, new, it's eighty-five. What's Amazon Tap? Is that what you have? That's what I have, and it was. I got it for like eighty. I think when I got it, it was like one hundred twenty dollars, mm. and then they got a new model out. So the one I have now is like eighty bucks. Mm. And it has Alexa. It has Alexa built in, um, and then we have Prime. So I have Prime Music. So I don't know. I go back and forth because Kenny's definitely is louder. Um, this isn't my Discover Weekly, but it's a good conversation. Um, his is louder. The the Bose uh, Soundlink color to whatever. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for something with a little more pump, his is better. But I do like the fact that it has like Amazon Music linked to it too. So when I'm in the shower, I can just like say any song and like, mm. oh, Alexa, play this and it'll play a song rather than like if I'm on shuffle my phone, you know what I mean? Like mm. you can't change it or anything. Um, so it's really nice that it has that feature and it is a little bit smaller or more. It's like that cylinder save, mm. which I do like. Um, so there's trade offs there. But I mean, but we already know the downfalls of that. What? Oh, I, oh, oh, it's not a rhombus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, but the new Apple thing's a cylinder, so it's more like an oval. Yeah, I mean, I can dive. That's a whole other conversation I can dive into if you want. But any sound frequencies. Anyway, in terms of a few things, in terms of a party or anything, like you can yell at it, volume up, volume down, mm. next song. So that's kind of nice with the Alexa thing. I like it when I'm like cooking mm. because I, I'm always, almost always preparing meat and like the raw meat on my hands. I can't, if I'm listening to a podcast or anything, I can't go back or go forward or change songs. Mm. Um, or I don't want to touch my phone until like I, I clean up. 
Um, so the Amazon's nice for that. Mm. And for 80 bucks versus the 130, uh, it'd be really interesting to do more of a side by side comparison. How about you're not getting the Bose name brand? I, I agree. The Bose is a little louder and a little better. It's got better sound quality for sure. But there are two different devices. They're, you're kind of comparing apples to oranges. One's like a smart speaker. Mm. They really have two different functions. Mm. Um, well, it really kicks is that uh, speaker that Dad and Brett both have. The Lantern? It's like yeah, a Lantern, the, the, the Bose. Bose that, that I would take that one any day. Yeah, that one's really cool. That I one, don't know what that, that one's really loud. Well. That one, yeah, that one smacks. Yeah, that slaps. Slaps. That one slaps. That, uh, if you check out the vlog from when we went in Holy Moly Donut a couple days ago, some guy was like, man, is, is that what he said? Those donuts? Those, that, those donuts that, slap? Is that slap? We're like, like dude, it's so yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's your discovery. That's a good one. Yeah. I use. I mean, I take that in the shower. I don't take it in the shower, but I have it. <laughs> I take it in the shower. I probably could. It's water resistant. It, it shocks and kills you. But I bring it to the shower because I love jamming out when I'm showering. See, ours, the shower in my room too, like that room, like the bathroom shower, acoustics. it's really small and it has incredible acoustics really Nothing it actually really does better than playing air guitar while you're buck naked yeah i mean <laughs> you talk about freedom <laughs> i feel like a patriot uh so bum 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 where were we uh what's your discover weekly i know but I, there was something out there was another point i thought i wanted to make on that um oh yeah i i'm really big into um like because when we travel like mm. the what what are the essentials and then what are some things that really can, um, like you don't need, mm -hmm. but you can bring that take up very little space, but can really optimize your trip. And I think you having that Bose is a mm. very good example. Like my Leatherman, mm. like I have like, it's really small, takes up very minimal space and so always my backpack and I have player screwdriver. Like that Bose is an example that you always have it when we travel. We always have a speaker and it doesn't take mm. up a lot of room. I'm really big into stuff like that when it comes to traveling, mm. um, because a lot of hotel speakers suck or mm -hmm. they don't have... I've seen some still nice hotels that still have like the 32-pin, yeah. like you know. So that that is a very good you Discover Weekly. You can take it to the beach. You can take it to the beach. I would highly... If you're looking for a Bluetooth speaker, it is a good middle-of-the-road price it's point for value. It's just easy to carry. Like you can carry it around if yep. you're going out on the porch or yep. whatever. It, it, it is very cool. Okay, my turn. Um, my Discover Weekly is... Dun, 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 dun. I'm drawing a blank. I wrote it down. This time, last time I didn't write it down and I forgot it. Oh, the hub of Detroit on Cass. Um, this is where I bought my bike from. Oh. It is a... Uh, isn't, isn't it called something else too? Or no? No, it's the, it's the hub of Detroit. Oh. But um, I got a Schwinn bike there for 150 bucks, And it's a mountain bike and all the gears work great and the brakes work good. And it's actually refurbished. So what people do, I don't know if they actually collect them from around the city, but people like donate old bikes and mm -hmm. different things like that. And they will either refurbish them as is, or I think I was told that they would um, like strip down different parts. And like if they, you have half of this thing that works or different things, they'll like two use. different colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a two tone. <laughs> there are things like that. They'll like, you know, put them together to make bikes that work. And <laughs> really big wheel in front. <laughs> like, like that old time bike that Mr. Mark used to ride around. <laughs> um, that was our janitor in elementary school. Well, he had that one uh, wheeled bike too. <laughs> Unicycle. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a good name so for it. I got. I should. I should. I should run with that. I should roll with that. <laughs> um, they sell bikes from like seventy to seventy to two hundred dollars. Mine was like one hundred and fifty. And all the proceeds go to a nonprofit called Back Alley Bikes. Mm. And I'm not. I try. I checked their website and I tried to see exactly like what that those donations go to, mm -hmm. and they didn't explicitly say. But um, I think at the bike shop I asked, and they just go. It goes to like funding um, like inner city projects and mm -hmm. anything like that. That's to, cool. So uh, it's you get, and it comes with a free tune up, which is like a seventy dollars service. So mm -hmm. you get a free tune up with it, um, and then you get like a thirty day warranty on anything that might break and different things like that. And they'll take care of it if there's issues. So and it's you know you're supporting your local community, and you get you can get a great bike with a warranty on it and a tune up for, I mean, less than two hundred dollars is really an incredible mm -hmm. deal because that's a nice bike for one hundred fifty dollars. I I love it. I I truly love that bike, and I guess. The reason it was perfect is because I didn't want to, I wasn't really, I thought about buying a new bike, but they're so expensive and like, I don't bike seriously enough to like need to go out and buy one. Mm -hmm. But like, I've been looking on Craigslist and it just seemed like such a waste of time. Like, okay, so what? I meet up with somebody, I ride the bike, I like it or it doesn't fit me right or all this, like, you know how much time it would take that 
at that point alone, the money comes worth it just to buy a new one because mm -hmm. all the time it would take. So this is an, a place where you can go to shop, and, you know, used bikes from a reliable source, Elvis mm -hmm. Community. And, I, and this is not an advertisement. This is just a genuine service that I appreciate. They're really nice mm -hmm. there. And, um, yeah, so check them out, the Hub of Detroit. And Hopefully Cass. they still have this one bike there because I think oh, it's Kenny, a steal. Kenny wanted No, don't tell them. People, someone will buy it. Well, if I didn't have Joanne, I would have bought it. Hundred dollars. I it still was, think you should buy it. It was this old Schwinn, seventies or eighties. Same frame, yeah, like that commuter. It's like a commuter style. It's like a blue, light blue called. paint job. It was dope. The coolest thing about it had a speedometer and an odometer on it. Yeah. So you knew how fast you were going. <laughs> I think it had like fifty three hundred hours on it or something like that. Uh, hours. I think that's what it was. There's no. It was definitely miles. How could it track hours? It's not a boat. <laughs> oh yeah. It's an odometer. It's mileage. Yeah, it was miles. But and dude, it had the RPMs too. But it's like a one speed commuter. Like that, dude, it dude, was so such dope. a cool bike. I wish Kenny would go buy it. I almost it. bought it just Kenny, to, you should buy it. for a hundred dollars just to throw away the bike frame and keep the speedometer. Put it on Joanne. Yeah. That's so strange. Yeah. Anyway, how about I didn't know because you're talking about like that nonprofit that they have back alley bikes. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your nonprofit that you support? Doctors without <laughs> diplomas. <laughs> <laughs> Between two ferns, Zach Galifianakis. Oh, 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 like, oh, oh, I do a lot of charity work. Uh, okay, so yeah, Brad Pitt's like, oh yeah, what's that? He's like, doctors without diplomas. <laughs> you just have a nice Thanksgiving. <laughs> just unbutton your pants. Oh, oh boy. boy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Holy crap! Oh no, my gosh, I don't know why that's so cities. funny. Oh man, <laughs> we can recap. Uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, that is hilarious. Yeah. If you haven't watched Between Two Ferns with Zach Galifianakis, watch it, It's dude. ludicrous. It's on YouTube. It's like a funnier die skit. <laughs> it is the funniest. I haven't seen one that wasn't funny. I know. They are hilarious. What are you, Puppa Smurf? <laughs> the the new Jerry Seinfeld one. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he loses it. He's like, ah! I get a fake laugh. He does. I know. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, we, we, can, we can recap. Yeah, so we can recap. This includes anything like last week that was yeah. you know post podcast so um i think it'd be appropriate to talk about or mention so we did a podcast first podcast with one of our models which just released today T well yesterday because this will launch tomorrow yeah it's live day of the currently. show it's episode 28 live. yeah and it was with uh, lexi verhill the the original like screw model yes because that was like we were phasing out serendipity well, and she starting did screw, serendipity did she shoot. yeah for sure. But she's like the original, like when we were screw, she was like the, the face of that. And um, we did a podcast with her and it was absolutely incredible. And we talked about like how we got started. Well, Lexi like, with is her. the voice of 60 Seconds of yep. Screw. So when you, well. every time you hear 60 Seconds of Screw, that's Lexi's voice. So we interviewed her and she uh, was a great conversation. So we, her dad brought us out moonshine and mm. beer while we were drinking. We got reminiscing on old stories and she gave some good advice on getting into modeling and how to reach out and work with brands. Which, if you want to work with brands, it's a good piece to listen to because we get people reach out. And to the way us. she got involved with us is, I mean, she got she kind of was the proactive person, to very get proactive, and took a lot of action. Mm -hmm. And we get a fair amount of people requesting to like brand ambassadors and different things. Mm -hmm. And she talks about what she did. So if that's something you're interested mm -hmm. in, it might be worth going and listening. And she to. tells the story on how she even. How sixty sec how she became the voice of sixty seconds of screw. Yeah. Which is interesting. It was funny. a very interesting episode if you are because we get a lot of questions too on the show about the origins of the brand. Mm -hmm. That would answer some indirect questions about our early days. Um but it was a really insightful and fun episode. Mm -hmm. uh, I would check it out. It, it, it was really good. And then before that, mm -hmm. we did a photo shoot with her uh at her pool. Got some incredible photos, mm -hmm. which I filtered through them yesterday, and I need to edit them. Uh, there's like 140, I think, of them that need to be edited, so we mm -hmm. need to edit those. But those turned out incredible. Kenny made a really great 60 seconds. There's a cool vlog of it. Um, all in all, it was our first photo shoot of 2018. We've yeah, been slacking we've been photo shoots slack, this year. But we, you know, we're not that it's better, worse, or indifferent. Where we've been slacking in photos, we've been doing more video and audio. Kind of, mm -hmm. you know, our efforts been in vlog and podcast in sixty mm -hmm. seconds. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll be doing more photo shoots. Anyway, that was last week slash going into the weekend. That was a ton of fun. So check out that sixty seconds. Um, the photos will be dropping soon. If you podcast. want a good podcast, listen to that. It was, it was episode twenty eight. Yeah, it was really good. Um, Lexi Verhill. Yep. 
and then uh, that same night we stayed with our buddy Andrew Morgan. Yeah. Who you've seen him in plenty of vlogs. Uh, there's a hilarious one where he gives the history of the Omega Speedmaster Professional. Oh, yeah. um, one of our friends forever mm -hmm. since you know elementary school. Uh, you kindergarten. Know, kindergarten. Yeah. Uh, kindergarten. <laughs> and uh, he has a PS4, but he never played Fortnite. <laughs> we got him hooked on Fortnite. We got him hooked on Fortnite. We downloaded Fortnite on his PlayStation and just got him. And the dangerous thing is, is he has a twin sister he lives with. And before we even downloaded it, we were talking about it. And she goes, oh, I love just watching people on the internet. She doesn't play, play video games. Game. She just enjoys watching. The so this is a dangerous combination. And Andrew likes playing. Uh, he like after he tried it, he goes, so I like playing this game. The fire. Man, you know, it's one likes to watch, one likes to play. This could this could waste a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we, we downloaded a Fortnite on his uh, PlayStation. What else? Is there anything else? Uh, oh, um, Saturday, we finally cashed in our $25 oh, gift yeah. card for winning trivia uh, a few weeks back at the penalty box yep. and crushed some beers. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday... We did, uh, at the Penalty Box, they did this really oh cool event gosh, called dude. Scratch and Dent. Yeah, that was awesome. And what it is, they take the beers that are about to expire, that are about to expire. And, and they're they scratched and dented. They are literally scratched and dent. You know, just beers they wouldn't sell. And they put them all in like a, a cooler, or like a, you know, like one of the big, I think it's like that ice chest thing. Mm. And uh, you pay a dollar. Mystery and they beer. just reach in there and pull it out, and you drink whatever you get. You just get a mystery beer for a dollar. We got some really. I got a beer that I had never had. It was called Wango by uh, mm. Atwater Brewery. Mm -hmm. It was a, almost a little on the sweet side. I could have one, but it, it's a wheat beer, and I love, love, love wheat beers. That's why I like Oberon, Blue Moon, things like that. And it reminded me of that with a little bit of a mango mm -hmm. finish. Um, and we got some really dude. Neat I beers. got three IPAs, and I Kenny loves IPAs. You had Hop Solution all day, and then um, you had the Hop Matic or something like that. Yeah. So and then I got a I, I got horny monk which I've never had which I didn't like. It wasn't no, good. yeah, I, I Toski brewing yeah, horny monk. I like horny I monk. Like I had my first one in Grand Rapids. It's uh, too like stouty or something. It's, really, uh, I don't think it's a stout. I, I know it's, it's a, not. It's not it's a. Uh, it's not a stout. But it could reminds we look up what kind of, of beer uh, horny monk is by Petoskey Brewing? And then Petoskey. I had yeah the. Uh, shit, I, I think, think it's like an American pale New ale ballast? or something like that. Ballast Point Brewing, I uh, like their Habanero IPA, you didn't like that which one. I got excited at first. I thought it was their IPA, their scallop, their citrus, their the mango citrus IPA, one? something oh. like that. I thought it was that. If you know what I'm talking about, the pineapple, yeah. they make a pineapple citrus one, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, incredible. I think, I, that's I what I thought it was. was yeah. It wasn't. It was no, the habanero, habanero one, and it was <sighs> disgusting. No wonder it was in the scratch and dent bin. It says it's a double or double. Belgian? Is it a Belgian? It's probably a Belgian. Huh. Um, so yeah, uh, I've yeah. had, uh, Bells, they have a habanero Oberon. Yeah. I don't like that stuff. Belgian. Yeah. yeah. It's a Belgian. Yeah. It's a Belgian. I didn't like it. I, I didn't. It was thicker. It was... I've had it before. I, I like it. My, my roommate in college and his dad, um, Brian and Jim Long really like horny monk from mm -hmm. what I remember. That's they, Brian is like, you have to try this. We were at a bar. Um, I don't think I've ever had it. I think it was in a can then too. I don't think I've ever seen it on draft. Really? I'm sure it is. But, uh. We left there seven dollars, like seven dollars, and you get seven beers. It's incredible, and they're good beers. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. not like yeah, they were. You, yeah, you, I, I was so happy when I got the IPAs. So I that's really the, cool. Do, okay, so we'll give we'll give them a plug because they're doing it again this Sunday, right? Yeah. So they're doing it again this weekend. So if you go out to Mopop this weekend and are maybe a little hungover, go to Jay's Penalty Box in Ferndale Sunday, um, mm -hmm. and they're All doing day. a scratch and that, and you probably see us there. So say hi to GNS, the owner, and our buddy Jake who. Runs the bar, Janice's son. So yeah. Anyway, um, that was the last few days. Yep. Then, I mean, we have to talk about this because it happened Sunday. Oh, I got eight victory royales in Fortnite. My game has increased steadily. Uh, me and our buddy Nate, who we actually met at the bar when we spent Saturday. our gift card Saturday. Mm -hmm. Um. We've known him for a couple a year or so now. Uh, him and I got, I think, four or five together. And then Kenny got on and got a couple with us too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what happened? Mm -hmm. So we ended up getting eight wins. So our game, we're getting better. We're not noobs anymore. We're not, we're not pro yet, but um, that's good. We got one last night with Coop when he was over. Coop clutched the win. Yeah, he did. Did we get two last night? Yeah. The first one, it was weird. We died. We people won. died in the storm. We just it was like six people left. People. And we're just like cruising through the map. And it, we got it like instantly. They all got caught in the storm. Yeah. Uh Enough Fortnite, Fortnite talking so if you don't addicting. like it, but it's so addicting. I think it's the we were talking about this, yeah. And I think I first heard it mentioned, maybe or maybe not on Joe Rogan. They were at, talking about like why people like it, and mm. this was when it was an early game. This was an old episode. I can't even remember who was on it. Mm. Um, 
But if you play it, okay, like for example, like Andrew's sister, Elizabeth, mm -hmm. like likes to watch it. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't know what Fortnite is, and I don't know how you might not know what it is because it's everywhere. It's you all over under the a rock, Patrick. Yeah. It's a video game, like a battle royale style. So people drop a uh, hundred people. You start in a plane or a bus or whatever. And then you like drop and then you have no weapons. And mm -hmm. then you have to search around the map for weapons. And then the, the last man standing on the island wins. So it's kind of this very primitive style of gameplay where level doesn't matter. You're either kind of good or you're not. And luck is a major factor. So this game has taken over the internet, didn't it? Was it, you 1. tell me 1.3 billion? billion it's okay so in let, under a year back up and it's, it's a free game yeah this game does not cost they've made over a billion dollars because they sell in-game purchases what's it's not like pay to win but we're pay to play but it's in-game purchases is that what they call it and um like you can buy like different characters and stuff nothing that, of which gives you a competitive advantage in the game it just looks cool it just looks cool so they're making it there's like this is a very interesting cultural phenomenon i didn't plan on talking about this but i think it's mm -hmm. really interesting mm -hmm. it's the colors and the sound and my our buddy Nate phrased it. He's like, yeah, it's like the casino effect. It's like the slap. Yeah. It really is. It's all these bright colors. It's animated. Which Super is, sound effects are very animated. At too. a glance, the game looks like a like a kids game. Yeah, it's very cartoonish. Very cartoonish. Um, the colors are very like vibrant. The sounds, like when you do stuff, like when you eat like an apple for health or things like that, the sounds are like super enticing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if a lot of it was by accident, but it kind of reminds me. Mm. It what it reminds me of is the tipping point. You know when they talk about Ma Ma the book by Malcolm Gladwell, the tipping point. They talk about how when they were like doing Sesame Street, mm -hmm. how they did all these tests, and it was like um, how uh, what color characters like you know mm -hmm. the, the bright yellow like mm -hmm. Big Bird and the red. They all they're, they were doing tests and seeing what the kids and they do all these focus groups. What are kids responding to? How do you, can you maintain their attention? What visual and audio cues you know? And they would watch. The, they'd have a machine that mm -hmm. would actually watch the children's eyes. Mm -hmm. So when they'd glance away and look down, and they have toys in front of them, they had the control variables, and they would just seeing the best way. It, whether it was intentional or not, I feel like this was engineered by some insanely smart people that mm -hmm. really put these visual and audio cues. It is so addictive when you win. The feeling of it is like winning a slot machine. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, it's 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 fun. It's very strange. Yeah. It's I've never super competitive. It's exhilarating. I was, we were really falling out of the video game scene. Like we were playing Rainbow Six Siege mm -hmm. now and then, but it was not like, all right, let's get on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was like, oh we have nothing to do right now. Let's play some Xbox. This is it's it's truly mm -hmm. It's so interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's taken over. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I the, the thing I find the most interesting about it is how many people love watching it. More than playing it. People who don't even play it. Like Andrew's sister. That was so strange to me. She doesn't play it. She doesn't play video games that I'm aware of. Like, she just she goes, oh, that for, oh, you're downloading Fortnite. I love watching videos of that on the internet. How strange. Like Twitch is a streaming service where people stream them live playing video games you can see Incredible. their see what they look like while they're playing them people will get on for entertainment just to watch which we've talked before on this podcast about it was our first discover weekly i think or second it was, was my it? second discover weekly people will watch first other gamers just play fortnite people I watch mean, us people watch other pe play other games but i feel fortnite is like the biggest it's, i'd say right and now ninja it's the like the biggest gamer there is just at an event with Red Bull and Willis Tower where they played from 8.30 at night till 5.30 in the morning. And they had like a live audience there the whole time and were streaming it. And it was... Here's the thing too. Like this is such a beautiful... And I know we've touched on this, but I want to re reiterate the point because we get asked a lot, especially by younger people, you know, I don't I want, don't know what to do with my life and all these things. And a lot of kids do really enjoy video games. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying... I'm not giving like false advice and saying everyone you know anyone can make it. you have to be very good mm -hmm. to succeed in the world of video games or yeah, have an extremely personality yeah. that's entertaining to watch but so i'm not saying anybody can do it you have to be good but the beauty of it is if you're playing anyway you can start streaming we started streaming on twitch just because people have been asking us on our live shows for our gamer tags so they could play with us so yeah and now we're streaming and we get people that don't even know us watching us play Fortnite, which is a cool way to you know grow the brand in that because we're playing anyway why not you know, off of mm -hmm. that, that medium, just like YouTube or, you know, Instagram, but people, wa people watch us mm -hmm. and we don't even know who they are mm -hmm. because they just like to watch people listen, play the game. It's so strange to me. It's, it's the biggest phenomenon. I'd say it's one of the biggest cultural phenomenons right now. It's taken over the internet. Oh yeah, for sure. I can't go on my timeline without getting hit by 
clips of Fortnite people. Granted, I follow them, but even in the search mm-hmm. bar and before that, and companies like Barstool Sports are po- like w- were posting things about Fortnite mm-hmm. when it was coming. Just very. It is crazy. I mean, we can move on from this, but I, it is from a business and social perspective. Mm-hmm. It raises a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. Something to ponder. Uh, Coop, how's our time doing? Ah, good thing I'm here. <laughs> You're fired from your internship. <laughs> Not even an internship. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, it does that. Is the red light going? I Yeah, start it again. You good? So, and the other thing, too, that just popped up on my Facebook today, which maybe uh, uh, Kenny and I, we might do it. Mm. Uh, somewhere in Farmington, mm. which isn't too far from us, they're doing a... Um, duos Fortnite tournament and you pay thirty dollars to buy in mm-hmm. and you can win like five thousand dollars yeah and i think i was like looking at it it's like the most it's not winning it's like who can get the most kills in like games oh really which is i think how a lot of tournaments do it like with the pro anyway they look like that that's a thing yeah that's that's a very real thing well, there's like the Fortnite world cup which i think we've talked about too. yeah anyway uh yeah it's a cool game all right, so we did a weekend recap. That was the end of weekend, weekend preview. Recap. We got Mopop this weekend, which unfortunately we're not going to, but um, big Detroit Music Festival. Portugal the Man is there. One of Kenny's favorite bands. And Scratch and Dead Beers Sunday. Yep. Probably do that. And I don't know. Hey, go hang around Detroit, probably. Yep. Go experience the uh, festival, what we can of it. We have a handful of questions this week. Yeah, good job, guys. You guys have been getting better. Yeah, a few weeks ago we were we were struggling for cues. You guys came through really strong this week. Thank you to everybody who sent a question. Mia, our friend Mia, won last week. I think she asked a SpongeBob. What was our favorite SpongeBob episode? Which we really dove into with Lexi. Yeah, so it, she won. Yeah, we went on some rants with a that. T-shirt. Mia, claim your prize. So we have a couple questions. You want me to start reading a couple or what? Uh yeah. All right, Felicia Fullwood. What is both you and Tyler's biggest struggles in owning your own business? Me or you? Good. I guess for me, um, you know, w- with being an entrepreneur and being self-employed, which I think can be two different things. You know, people can have their own business and be, you know, still have a day job. But being like fully self-employed, uh there's this constant yin and yang, which we talk a lot about. Mm-hmm. And I think the biggest struggle is, and I wrote this down cause I wanted to phrase it right. Um, not getting comfortable, but being okay while constantly being okay with being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to get into rhythms like, okay, this is working, we're selling a lot of this, or we're making money through this, and to just get, it's very easy to, to, to sustain and just ride those waves and like be comfortable mm-hmm. with that. But I think the but the most important thing to do is be like, all right, we're comfortable, how do we make it harder? How do we challenge ourselves? How do we do more? Mm-hmm. Which is re- like, I think it's, you know, it's like it's resistance. It's against human nature. Like it's it's hard for people to go to the gym and work out because it's mm-hmm. resistant. So, and then in this giant process, how do you get comfortable being uncomfortable? Mm. That is like the end game. I think I think that is the secret to being a successful business owner, which I, I'm not saying by any means that we are. But I think to me, the most successful businesses, are the owners, the people who are the, the, the brains and the motor behind everything, mm. it's who it's, – it's kind of like managing risk, but it's who – are you comfortable being uncomfortable? I think that a lot of companies, because you know, you look, a lot of the biggest companies in the world right now aren't more than like what two generations old. You know yeah, what I mean? If you really think about Apple, what year? Nineteen successful companies, Coke, or uh, not Coke, but Red Bull, Google, YouTube. Companies really don't last more than a generation or two. Yeah, you have a lot of stuff that dies out. Look at all the car companies that have disappeared over the, over the last mm-hmm. twenty years. Mm-hmm. So the Apple will start in 76. It's not even 100 years old. Yeah. So I think what happens is, it, like, once you succeed, like, it's very hard to keep taking risk. And I don't blame people for not taking risk because there's people on the line and, you know, you have your employees mm-hmm. and you're, you have everything. But I think 
continually making yourself uncomfortable and doing more and challenging your own status quo and not competing. It's not about me. It's not about we're going after our direct competitor. I don't really believe in that. I believe if you're good at what you do, then the rest will fall in place. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just constantly making us uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. you know, challenging our income and challenging our daily activities and Mm -hmm. challenging ourselves. I think it's something we're good at, but I think that that is something to easy. It's easy to, not challenge yourself mm-hmm. because you know you work really hard to get to a point to where you can take a breath now and then mm-hmm. which we do <clears throat> but i think that that struggle is making yourself you know gas for air every now and then and mm-hmm. things like that it's super important and See, I, I, I go ahead i i i just think it's important to and i don't know if that's it's kind of i'm kind of going circles you know she said well what's your biggest struggle Mm -hmm. i think the biggest struggle is always making it a struggle you know Mm -hmm. what i mean like Mm -hmm. that that adversity is very healthy Mm -hmm. you know it's just it's healthy for growth i think it kickstarts everything i don't know i mean no see i sense i really think that is the key to life is to constantly progress i think and i've been doing thinking about this i don't know like people say define what's like success are you elaborating on my point or is this your own no, this, I'm kind of going off of what okay, you good, said. Okay, good, because I think it's a good conversation to have. Um, people say, like, what is success or what does success mean to you? How do you define success? And I was thinking, too, like, you know, how do you define happiness? What is happiness? And I don't know if there's really – is there a difference between success and happiness? I think for most people, yes, but I think – I think if, it's the same I thing. I think it's the same thing, but I think surface, if you ask people. Success is, bit like, financial well-being and – I think that when people like buzzword hear success, I'm not saying they're the same thing. I agree. See, I've the thought same about thing. it, and I think my answer to both of those questions is the same exact answer because I really think they're synonymous. Success is just a different word for happiness, and happiness is just a different word for success. Yeah. Um, so the constantly progressing, the yin and yang, I think that is the secret and the key to life is to, if you can kind of master and be in a state where you are perfectly at peace with where you're at in the moment on a day-to-day, minute-to-minute, moment-to-moment level, but on the same token, while you're in the moment and you're happy with where you're at, you are a complete 180. You are constantly wanting to get better. You're constantly wanting to progress. You're constantly wanting more. And I think if you can kind of harness that and have that balance, um, that is the key to life. And I think that's what happiness is. That's what it is to me anyways. So Having maybe, that yin maybe. and yang of like, I'm happy with what we're doing right now. I'm happy with how many followers we have, you know, where the brand's at, the podcast, how many downloads we have. But on the same token, want more. Want to continue to grow the brand. I think it's being like grateful for where you're at and appreciating that, but understanding that there's more Mm -hmm. to the picture Mm -hmm. and I think you kind of phrased up what I was trying to say really well because it's very hard to articulate these thoughts Mm -hmm. I'm kind of running in circles because this is I mean we're kind of talking about the grand scheme of life nobody Mm -hmm. has this figured out Mm -hmm. you know what I mean and I think that you articulated it really well it's that's the struggle the struggle is being can being happy and in the moment with where you're at but always making yourself uncomfortable and wanting more I think that you kind of phrased that answer really Mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm that's that's kind of what I was trying to say. And I think that's an excellent that's an excellent point. It's like one thing I need to work on more is gratitude. Mm-hmm. I remember graduating college hardly a year ago. Y- what, right? Year? Is that mm. a year ago? Was yeah. that like a year and a couple months ago? Yep. I'm like, man, it's time to, like this, at this stage in life, you get a job. And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, that's not how I'm going to live my life. And there's nothing wrong with people who do live that life. And I knew what we had been working for. And I'm like, the next big step for us is to get down to the Detroit area. We've Mm -hmm. been talking about it. And that was a huge, huge risk. That's a, that was a big step out. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, that was one of our biggest moves. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, if we can get down there, that would be a, if I remember, like, I'm like a miniature, like a miniature dream come true for me would be to live in the Detroit area and being able to. I've always had this dream of being able to like walk to a bar mm. and have a oh, local yeah. watering yeah. hole. We we both and and it's not even the driving aspect. I just think that that's like culture mm-hmm. and community, and I've always thought that is so cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if we get there, how incredible would that be? Mm-hmm. 
and we're here. And I take it for granted every single day. And I let little things get in my head, you know, mm. which is part of life. And and I'm ashamed to say I'm not good at, at gratitude. I need this. I should sit down every morning. It's something I want to start doing and like thinking of. That's like the five minute journal, but I, I don't do well with taking that time. I just, I need to sit down and think of things I'm grateful for and trying to get into that space. Mm, mm -hmm. And I think that's something I'm really bad at. Mm. And I think if I did that, I would have a better, a happier day. Mm. So I'd be like, man, this is really great. But the counter side to that is what's next? It's okay. You know, we're in Ferndale. Great. Where do we want to be next year? Do we want to be downtown Detroit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What do we want? The, the same size space or a bigger space where we have, you know, room for uh, maybe a whole studio for artists to come in and record? And it's that yin and yang. It's being. You can't be. Oh well. Th this is perfect. We have the perfect house. You know what I mean? I'm so grateful for this because then you'll never progress. Mm. But if you're like, oh, you know, we need more. We need more. You're always chasing the next thing. You'll never be happy. It's this mm. weird, screwed up thing that is so hard to harness. You know? Do you agree with what I'm saying? Like that mm. balance is so I mean, it's, hard to master. It's what yin and yang is, and that's what yeah. Ruka's motto is, which I love. It's a balance of opposites. Balance of opposites. And it's so true. So, so you, that is a struggle. I don't. I I think it's our it's probably one of our biggest strengths in terms of business is we don't take enough time to slow down and really appreciate where we're at. That's bad. Mm -hmm. That's bad yeah. for your own head. Mm -hmm. But that's one of our biggest strengths because we're so on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were doing sixty seconds of screw man and doing do this video every day. This takes a lot of it takes a lot of time. Remember when we were like, man, this takes a lot of time, but it's important. Mm -hmm. But we were just talking about it's a big chunk of the day, mm -hmm. and we said, you know what, let's do more. Mm -hmm. I remember this conversation we had. It was right when we moved down here. I goes, Kenny, I think we, I think I want to start a vlog. And mm. I know you would always thought it would be a great idea. And I goes, I goes, man, but every day, you know, it's five to seven minute edit. I go, and Kenny was really always in charge of the 60 seconds. I goes, I know how much time that takes. Mm. And you're like, yeah. And, and I remember you said, if we do it, we have to do it daily. And I agree. If I did a vlog and didn't do it daily, um, I don't think it would get done. I know mm. my personality because it'd be, you know, like once a week, it, it, I would, that having to do that daily was mm -hmm. good structure for me. Mm -hmm. I guess the point is we could have been like, wow, 60 seconds every day. That's quite an accomplishment. We're 760 some days with uh, doing a video every day, but we made our, our hunger for more. We, we, we said, well, there's two of us. Why, why can't we do two videos? Mm -hmm. every, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that was a version of making ourselves more uncomfortable, but in turn, it's yielded incredible, incredible opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's done more for my own work ethic. You know, it's a sense of accomplishment every day. It, I get to do, I have to do something productive every day. The 4th of July, we're, we do, I do the video every day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's that making yourself uncomfortable while being grateful for where you're at. This is a, I didn't even expect to go there with this question, but it, it's a super important conversation. And I think the biggest struggle with our business is kind of a personal struggle. It's, I don't show enough gratitude and take down and smell the time to smell the roses. I don't think you do either. Mm -mm. I don't want to speak for you, but I know you're, you're no, even more that way. Yeah, I'm not very good. I'm that. better about it than you are. Mm -hmm. You're very task oriented on to the next thing. And I, you know, am a little bit better yeah, about it. I definitely take things for granted because I, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it when it happens. I expected it to happen anyways, because I was going to do it. You it, know, that balance is just so strange. It mm -hmm. just really is. And it's that constant progression. So it's like, I remember when like into my college career, I was not in the shape I wanted to be in. I goes, man, what I would be to be down, what, 20 pounds. And now I weigh, I don't know, probably 25, 30 pounds less than I did at the end of my college career. And I'm like, it's not enough. Mm. Well, now it's not about losing weight. It's just about getting in better shape. That's a, that's a great obsession to mm. be chasing that. But at the same time, like, you know, love yourself. Dude, it's the yin and yang. It's the balance of opposites. It's being, it's like a paradox. It is. I mean, it's. I think that is the key. You have to be happy with where you're at, but at the same token, it's like, what's next? I challenge everybody listening to really reflect on your life in this way. Mm -hmm. And it, it'll send you down a rabbit hole if you let it, which is okay. So don't let it steer you... And have an adverse effect. I mean, if anything, it should really, you know, help you with your personal endeavors. Mm -hmm. But be at peace, be in the moment, but always constantly progress. Figure out what can I do better. Yeah. That's what I like to do. And I think it's, I mean, it's healthy for me. It's very healthy. And I, the last few days I've been trying to be more uh, gratuitous about different things. And try not to judge yourself too hard. Yeah. That's what I've worked on too since I've been down here. Really taking Felicia's question uh, off the wall. Question. But yeah, uh, 
not judge. That's one thing. Once I moved down here, was not judging myself very hard, and then not judging other people. First, yeah. don't judge myself for, uh, you know, so, something I might have messed up or making a wrong decision in business or personal life or whatever it may be. Don't judge yourself so hard. Don't take things too seriously, and don't do that. First of all, don't judge yourself hard. Second off, don't judge other people either. Because you never know what's going on in somebody's life, you know, what happened that day, that week, that month, whatever it may be. I think um, any external outlash is almost always a result of internal is. conflict. I, I would agree with that 100%. <laughs> I, I think it's a great point you made. Yeah. You were the one who gave me that advice, and I always knew never be hard on yourself, but I've never heard it phrased like that. And mm. I don't know if you made that up or if you heard it somewhere, but the whole don't judge yourself is... It's weird. Mm -hmm. to, that, that Saying that aloud even sounds weird. What do you mean don't judge yourself? What does well, that mean? What, what that spawned from really was when I read uh, Tim Ferriss's, I think, Tribe of Mentors. Incredible book. And uh, maybe he was quoting a book for the love of the game or something. I think some tennis coach. He goes like, these tennis players, they when they mess up, internally they speak so harshly on themselves. You know, they're cussing at themselves inside their head. They're beating themselves up. They're like, if you're playing a doubles match or you're coaching somebody else, your kid or a friend, you wouldn't talk to a teammate or somebody else, a friend like that, how you're <laughs> talking internally to yourself. So why would you talk to yourself that way? It's so strange, so bizarre. And I read that. I was like, oh, that's pretty powerful. I was like, I'm, I'm extremely hard on myself internally, and I'm not really – I would never, like, speak to somebody like that in person because you'd just come off as like a dick and an asshole and you'd be super negative. Well, Kenny is probably, grew up my entire life, I mean, I'm a social guy, I've encountered a ton of people and he's probably the hardest person on himself that I've ever met and not in a depressive way, in a, like uh, the perfect metaphor in a real life example is in sports when Kenny would play basketball, if he'd miss a shot, he would get so like, like his conversation to himself would be like, screw you, dude, you need to make that. But he would twist that into going down and now sp sp getting a loose ball and stealing it so he could finish what he started. And I think that like that his greatest strength was his greatest weakness for a long time. Like you said, you wouldn't talk to anybody else like that, mm. but you would talk to me like that. Mm. And, and I always never understood that. Like mm -hmm. you'd be like, dude, you gotta make that shot or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And you're, and I never understood till later in life that that was the biggest form of flattery. He he would never talk to anybody like because he just wouldn't get. Well, you didn't like it. You'd get upset because it was no, I didn't like very it. Hard on you. I don't I, like. I don't get motivated by getting mm -hmm. yelled at. Like that's you know some people and not that anybody does, but there's a balance of you know coaching and things. And he, and and that would always bother me. But I realized long term that's a big compliment. He doesn't talk to anybody else like that. It's because he thinks of me as his equal, and he goes, "I can talk to myself like that because I'm trying to be the best." And I think that. You can be, you know, it was, he coached me the way he coached himself, which was a very important, not that it was right, wrong, or indifferent, but it's this whole thing of you wouldn't talk to your, you know, colleagues like that or anything. So why treat yourself like that? Like that just shows how you've grown as a person. And it's not, so what you, you hit the snooze, you slept in. What's the point in getting pissed and on yourself? Cause guess what? You're going to lash out on others. You're going to have a negative outlook on the day. But if you just say it is what it is, I'm going to do my best to improve and not let that happen again. And hey, who knows? Maybe if I would have got up earlier, if you're into this sort of thing, I would have got my car. I would have been in the car. You don't. You never know what, why things happen. So don't look too deep into them, and don't judge yourself. It's mm. just a super interesting concept. This, and I think it's really strange because everybody says, "Oh, I don't." Yeah, I, one of the most common things I hear is, "Oh, I don't judge people." You know what I mean? Like it's a very weird surface. Everybody judges people. Mm. I, it's the first thing you do when you meet somebody. Mm. You make a judgment on them. Mm. Now, the best thing you can do is, I don't think it's not judge people because you're going to. It's human nature. It's if you're going to judge someone, the best thing you can do is be empathetic and put yourself in their shoes and realize everybody has a story. Mm. I remember specifically, and I won't use a name, I was in a college class and we had to write these papers. And it was, I was sitting next to a girl that I had another class with. We were familiar, like we knew each other, but we didn't never hang out outside of class or anything. And we had to write like a personal essay or something. Mm. It was it was prereqs. It was like one of the early English classes. Mm. And I was like, oh, I mean, can can I read your can I read your story? You know, she's like, oh no. I was well, you know, the professor said we need somebody to edit it. I'm just happy to edit. I, you know, my my buddy had already off edited mine. I just I was happy to edit it. And she was a little reluctant, and then I read it, and it was deeply personal about so, like her inner conflicts of life and how she's conquered over those. And it just, I'll never forget that because 
I never would have imagined a million years the stuff that this person had gone through. And mm. it was some it was some brutal shit. Mm. You know, it was tough. And maybe if I didn't read, I would have been like, what the hell is her problem? Mm. Seriously? Mm. You need somebody like, I'm too good to grade your paper? Mm. You know, I'm hyperbolizing a little bit. But, you know, th- this is an example of, you know, you say don't judge yourself. We already talked about don't judge yourself and what that means. Well, don't judge others. I think you're going to judge others. It's human nature. It's okay to judge people, but not in a negative. You know, you're going to have a reaction, I guess. Not judge, but you're going to have a reaction when you meet somebody. I Just be my, more open. My advice would be try and be empathetic and open because you don't know what they've gone through and try and put yourself in their shoes. If somebody snaps don't at you. Don't assume the worst. Don't be negative in your reaction. Yeah, if somebody snaps you, you don't know what the hell they've been through that day. So don't judge yourself and don't judge others, I think is incredible advice. Mm-hmm. Um, something else to think about. I think about. really has to start with the self, though. And as soon as, when I stopped doing that, when I stopped judging myself, I became a lot more open and less judgmental just because I wasn't as hard on myself. And you become... If you practice it on yourself, which you're around yourself, you're constantly in your own head. If you can kind of get that down, it makes it easier to practice it in the real world with the real people. The more at peace you are, the mm-hmm. the more at peace you are. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, yeah, to Felicia's question too, my answer would be uh, our biggest struggle, I think, is uh, patience. Having patience because, like we've said before, what we're doing, what we're trying to build this brand takes time you know i read it takes eight years to build a brand i read somewhere else you know walt disney ceo told the rack it takes 10 to 20 years so it's a super it's a very long game we're playing and like my outlook on constantly progressing and wanting more and wanting like kind of like bigger and better and being in certain milestones um we need to have that yin and yang where it's like it's good to have more downloads or more followers or more views or more sales but on the same token it's like to really get to where we want to be, you have to kind of take a slow, progressive route and just enjoy the journey. I want to elaborate on that. Uh, Don't re- r- rush and wish it away. Yeah. Incredible point you're making. <laughs> this reminds me of when we were driving um, out to Ludington. We kind of took a random trip to Ludington after Memorial Weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Memorial Weekend. Yeah. We were coming out of Claire, and we said, screw it. We have a couple of days with nothing real on the calendar. Let's head out west side of the state, camp, and just you know, kind of explore our thoughts a little bit, mm-hmm. which ended up yielding an incredible story for another time. It's on, the, it's on another podcast. Um, for example, you say, you know, like the patience of the brand. Mm-hmm. This is the epitome of it, and I try and keep this in mind. Like, yeah, we want more followers. We wish we were bigger you know that's that's a natural part of life everybody wishes they had more you know Mm -hmm. what i mean and working for it's half of it but like we'll never get this point in our lives back right now you know or that that day it was the epitome of like that day we we had no real responsibility or obligation anybody so we could just pick up and drive out west for three days which we did and we could have stayed a week if we wanted to we could have stayed it didn't matter we had this flexibility in our life right now that in 10 years we're not going to have that flexibility you know what i mean we could Mm -hmm. have a i don't know what that's going to look like but if we have this office space and all these people that we're responsible for and all these day-to-day operations we're not going to have that agility and that Mm -hmm. flexibility anymore Mm -hmm. so it's always wanting more but understanding the you know where you're at there's mm-hmm. some real cool benefits of you mm-hmm. know what i mean that part that we can go to a bar on a tuesday night because we don't have to the huge responsibility on a wednesday we can go play bar trivia and make friends with the owners and all these cool things mm-hmm. you know what i mean so i think that that was just a nice antidote to what you were saying of in terms of growth and size of the business there's really incredible parts of each stage that mm-hmm. um if you have an open mind to it you could really enjoy mm-hmm. like the flexibility of being small can mm-hmm. be an incredible and not wish joyous it thing and not wish it away. Mm-hmm. Cause there's going to be a point where you're 60 years old and what's really the most exciting part about a mm-hmm. company, like owning it when you're 60 or the like journey, the grit yeah. and the grind and the journey. Mm-hmm. So just stop and smell the roses sometimes. I mean, those are very overlapping answers, but I think very good points nonetheless. Mm-hmm. So good question, Felicia. Yeah, that was a good springboard. I didn't expect to go there. No, me neither. Um, all right, next question. We could do we will go <laughs> let's let's go on a lighter note. Well should we since we're Yeah, go ahead. We'll go with her boyfriend's question. Andrew Instagram flying plastic bag. Felicia and Andrew are the people that we discovered or did uh, like downtown Detroit with. Yes. Uh did some Urban, abandoned buildings. I think it's called Urban Exploring. Ooh. Is that term? He said, is cereal considered soup? 
instantly this reminds me of our cousin Russell's question is a hot dog a sandwich or a sub, sub yeah um oh god my answer is no and it is no because i looked up the definition of what soup actually is a liquid dish which hot does it have to be hot typically made by boiling meat fish or vegetables so there's no meat there's no vegetables and there's no boiling hot water it's not hot. Soup is hot. Hot with, I mean, I guess chicken noodle. I don't know, chicken noodle soup has chicken in it. I was thinking of something just like noodles, like Raymond. Tomato soup? What about tomato soup? But it's vegetable. Okay, well. Is there vegetables in Raymond? A noodle? It's not a vegetable. No. Those little green uh, parsley things, or are that? I don't know. The Merriman Webster Dictionary, a liquid food, especially with the meat, fish, or vegetable stock, is a base and often containing pieces of solid food. I would have to go with cereal is not a soup off the sole reason that it is not hot. A cereal is a cereal. A cereal, I think, is his own category. So a I get. Like yeah. Cooper says cereal is Do green. you think a cereal is a soup? I think cereal is cereal. Now, I guess a better question would be. Definitions aren't inclusive. Yeah. The the real question would be is not cereal soup, but is oatmeal soup? Because of that. It's made of oats. It's hot. It's hot. That's now what is the difference between stew and soup? Somebody told me this. Stew has to sit for so long. I think it takes a long time to cook a stew and there's more there's I think there's always <laughs> stew. Po- I think there's always potatoes in a <laughs> stew. <Sleepy too>. stew. <laughs> I think there's always potatoes in a stew. <laughs> So, Cooper said a cereal is any edible component. So the of a cereal is not a soup. Not a, soup but I guess a soup could be a cereal if it was yeah. hot, had meat and grain. Right. I don't no. know. It's interesting. That's what, what do you think a, a hot dog is a sandwich or a, a sub? Sandwich. Cooper said sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. I'm gonna go. S- oatmeal is closer to the soup family than cereal. I agree with that. I agree with that. Hot oats. You have a question? Thanks, Andrew. Mm, I like that question. Good question. If you could have any pet animal, what would it be? Julia Lacito. Any? What'd you say? Like exotic? Was that? It might have been. I mean, any pet. I was thinking something I could ride, but then like a lion or a tiger would be pretty badass too. I might change my answer. I have two good answers. I'm kind of in conflict now. I think one... Does that have to be... It could be like a dinosaur? I have three answers. No, it's got to be alive. It's got to okay. be real. I have three answers, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll decide after I walk through them. One... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and restart it. Oh, restart it. it, yeah. One, a parrot would be cool because it's very pirate-like. Is red light on? Yeah, you're good. Uh, it would be very pirate like. Mm. I don't think that's where I want to go. Realistically, it's between these two things: a monkey. Yeah, a monkey would be cool. Like a little shoulder, mo- like just one of those little ones. What are those called? Thank you, Jack. Yeah, yeah, Thank like like the, like the one off. Yeah, the one off Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, a little shoulder monkey that I could like hand him a beer if monkeys can drink, and he could like drink a beer, and I can like give him little snacks. That'd yeah, be really cool. Um, but more realistically, I think I'd want a falcon, one of those. But I want it trained in the ability to hunt, because like that, like that's a real thing. And like I just like like with, like stick my arm out and he'd like land on it, and I'd be like tell him to go and he'd go out and get dinner, and like he would just hunt for me. Yeah. And what's so sweet, a falcon, dude. I think I want a falcon. I like the idea of a monkey. That's cool. A little monkey that just can sit How there. How sweet would that be? Though? Eat some Cheetos with, with the yeah, watch TV. Yeah. <laughs> Play for it. Like, <laughs> when you like, you're going to kill him for uh, Are you talking like the little monkey or yeah. like the monkey of like Drake and Josh? It's like a chimpanzee. No. Bobo? Yeah. Come Bobo. I think a chimpanzee would be cool because no. they're like more human like. I want, I want the. Yes. Yes. The or little the one off friends, or the one off uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, like the little guy. Yeah, there's a name for that kind of monkey. Look, yeah. look that up. Uh, I know what it is. I can't think of it. House monkey. It's, isn't it a capuchin monkey. Oh, it might be domesticated house cat. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what was your answer? Did you? Announce? I don't know. I said a lion or a tiger. I want a giraffe so I can feed it from my treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> is that Alan? Hey, Alan. <laughs> uh, I would pry. I like like the domesticated monkey kind of just just chilling in your house. That is so cool. 
He's just like an actual, like another, like little human figure. He's walking around like two legs. I put pants on him. (laughs) I dress him up. (laughs) He's crashing a bat. He's got a. I'm gonna go chimpanzee so he's bigger. And that way, dude, I think he would kill you. You don't want a chimpanzee. No, he's my boy, dude. If you pissed him off, he's my boy, bro. I don't want something in my house that can kill me. The whole snake is a pet. No, that thing gets out of its crate cage. What what do you put those things in the glass aquarium terrarium? No, I dude, listen. Yeah, I'm gonna go. You know how many stories there are somebody like that boa constrictors it, sizing up their owners to eat? I, anything that can kill me, I don't like want in the house. Or a tiger. No, I don't want a lion or a tiger. How yeah. could that's that's not good for that animal? A monkey, a little monkey running around. Do a take him to the bar. Yeah, that cool. way, if you know, you a know, chimpanzee there's can an altercation. You. What's your little monkey gonna do? If I have a chimpanzee, it's getting drunk at the bar with me. He's gonna he's gonna fight with me. Yeah, and then you're in jail for <laughs> involuntary manslaughter because the chimpanzee. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't kill him. <laughs> dude, this, this is a well This is so, so strong. You <laughs> sedate him every night. We need to work out together. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the gym. You have He's benching. Like you get a gorilla. You have a gorilla. Silverback gorilla. Oh, my God. <laughs> what what <laughs> would we in a fight? A silverback gorilla or a grizzly bear? Honestly. Oh, gorilla, dude. You think so? That's smarter. And they have fingers. Mm-hmm. I, I think the bear has more of just groups, right? Dude, I, but the silverback, I think, would just be... I need somebody, they have huge somebody look teeth into this. Too, don't they? Yeah, but dude, a bear, a grizzly. Dude, Bears what? Look up the average size of a silverback gorilla and the average size of a grizzly bear. Silverback gorillas? Wait. Dude, silverback gorillas are so strong. I know they are. That I think that it would just crush. I think it would like get its hand around its larynx. Would a silverback yeah. kill a lion? I think that'd be an easier fight than a. I think it would easily beat dude, a do you lion. you think a cat is. Less of a fight than a gorilla, or I, than a, a grizzly. A bear. Hun- oh, dude, grizzly bears like twelve hundred pounds. How, look up like average size. Of, uh, that's a big. I mean, twelve hundred is a big grizzly bear, but they exist. Um, Silverbacks weigh. Is so you're talking about an animal twice the size of a dude. Silverbacks have to weigh more than that. I mean, they're huge. I don't really know gorillas, but dude, grizzly bears are freaking fierce. They get- Dude, I don't. This is a. Good, I would rather run into a grizzly bear in nature than a. Silverback. No way. I would kill. I no, could kill a grizzly bear. No way you could not kill a grizzly bear. You ever bear. see that movie Coach Hunt showed us? I forget it. The guy, he he whittles a giant, giant. He makes the tree out of a needle and a magnet. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I can't think of who the actor is, but the grizzly bear starts charging at him, and he like corners himself between like a waterfall like rock area and he shoves the stick down and the grizzly bear jumps on him pierces him kills him thanks that's for, how you kill a grizzly bear spoiler alert <laughs> so much strength. dude and twice the size it's got claws and fangs dude a, a silverback would never be that dumb what do you mean you put him in a ring like this no is i'm getting, saying this no, is getting twisted okay no no um, they're in nature i'm saying if i'm versing a silverback or a grizzly bear i'd rather verse a grizzly well first bear. off a silverback's much less hostile than a grizzly bear okay but it wants to kill you i don't want to fight either of them both these things want to kill you i think you. i could reason like sign rather, language with the, the i'd rather fight a grizzly bear <laughs> a silverback it would be just as smart as i am if i try to do that trick i'd just like grab it break it and stab me with it you, you think these? How have you ever they, seen Tarzan? Oh my god, dude! What do you what do you think? Who would win? A bear. I think a bear would destroy silverback. You know what a silverback would do if I saw that? Just <laughs> grab its hand, break it. The only weapon a, a silverback doesn't have a weapon. Sharp teeth, maybe the grizzly bear has claws. Oh my god. Dude, I'm telling you, silver. Like, big like, and uh, dumb. <laughs> I don't think bears are dumb. Dumb compared to a gorilla. And I think a bear is faster than a gorilla. I think a bear is faster than a gorilla. Dude. Just because you're big so and fast cool. doesn't mean you can beat up a silverback gorilla. You, is this a metaphor for like your own thoughts? <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I think a silverback would win. I think it would outsmart the bear. It'd get it tired. Are silverbacks the biggest gorillas? Huh? Are silverbacks the biggest gorillas? I think so. They're like, <laughs> the king of, they're like the king of the jungle besides like the lion. Like a silverback gorilla dude, that thing like walks around like <laughs> pounds its chest. I really, my gut says if I like had to bet, I would bet on a grizzly bear any day of the week. Like the biggest, we'll go outliers. The okay. biggest, strongest, all right. The biggest, strongest grizzly bear gets the biggest, strongest gorilla. I would bet on a grizzly bear. 
Oh, the, like the is there a uh, gorilla in Rampage? King Kong. Okay, King Kong's not real. All right, you've seen videos of grizzly bears being domesticated. Can you see that one where uh, just recently in Russia there was a grizzly bear like riding in like the cart for like the World Cup in a car? Yeah. Yeah, you ever seen that uh, silverback gorilla do that? Yeah, they they yeah. talk with them and they yeah, they pick those every, are silverbacks. Oh yeah. So, yeah, why are you fixing the silverback thing? Like, are you obsessed with silverback gorillas? <laughs> you keep using that word. Right. All right, what do you want me to call? Just a gorilla. Just a gorilla. Is fine. There's there's different. I mean, a, a regular. Yeah, they like teach him. Lee that's just a gorilla. You think that's domestic? You think a, a, a bear in a cart's domesticated? They talk with a gorilla. How do you get anyone? <laughs> exactly my point. They're more intelligent. <laughs> Can't talk with the bear. Exactly. There's no reason that it will kill you if it wants to kill you. It doesn't reason. There's no <laughs> compassion. No. There's multiple t- uh, types of gorillas, isn't there? Silverback yeah. is like that. I know, but you already said silverback. You don't have to keep saying it. You can just yeah. say gorilla. Well, I'm I don't just, keep I'm saying not grizzly saying bear. A, I just said bear. I'm not saying just a regular gorilla that could get killed by a grizzly yeah, bear. Yeah, because there was <laughs> not. Um, I'm gonna. What would you rather run into in nature? A gorilla. Are you kidding me? That's like, I, I could, put, dude, you know how fast a, grizzly bears can climb, they can run, they're huge, and they have no sense of, exactly, they're not intelligent. I feel like if I just ran into it in nature, a, a, a gorilla, it'd be more likely to leave me alone. Kill you. You asked. It would pick you up and take your hand. It'd, it'd <laughs> no, it'd take my foot and like, <laughs> like, it would like say, when hey, the hawk like doesn't it would it sign key. with sign language. It'd be like, hey, come here because it was, look at this stupid human. He thinks I'm friends with him. I'm doing sign language. And then I have a gun on me and I kill him. Because he knows sign language. He already took your gun and took all the okay, bullets so out of it when you were sleeping. Oh my God. How fast does silverbacks run? <laughs> <Can't even stop. laughs> what? 30, I can't even run 30 miles an hour. I don't think Usain Bolt can run 30 miles an hour. Uh, so how what's how fat what's like you saying bolts like fastest mile per hour time? How much can a grizzly bear bench? <laughs> how much can a silverback bench? Uh, the fastest man alive could not outrun a grizzly bear, and you'd rather fight a gorilla. Yeah. No, I'd rather fight a grizzly bear. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You couldn't outrun it alone. <laughs> Wouldn't outrun it. Out outsmart it. With what? <laughs> You're not very brain. Tell my brain. Come about a bear. Yeah. And it sees you and starts running at you. you Zigzag. Zigzag. It's not an alligator. <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm zigging, zagging, dude. I can cut you faster are... than, a gorilla, than a grizzly bear. My brain. I would outsmart it. I would run it in trees. I would make it knock its head against a tree. <laughs> I'd take a rock and i hit it right in its eye. You're so dumb. You try doing that with a silverback? I'll just... <laughs> just watch you run around. I was like, this idiot. I'm going to wait for him to get tired. And then I'm going to kill him. <laughs> this conversation's over. Next question. Oh, my gosh. Oh, shit. So what would you rather have defending your house? A grizzly bear. I'd choose like a black panther or something. I didn't know there was another option. That was just an open question. No, Super good. stealthy. You have no idea where it's at. You just see its eyes last second and kills you. No, I would take like an alpha male wolf. A house cat. Around. Who would win? All right. Who would win? An alpha male wolf or like a lion? Lion. You need a pack of wolves to. Ah, that's true. Yeah. To feed a lion. So, yeah, you need a cat, a big cat to defend your house. I want a yeah, big cat. Tiger. Cooper. Tigers are very aggressive. They're more aggressive than lions. Really? Yeah. What about Black Panthers? I don't know. I just know. It just would be so quiet. You had no idea where it's at. And be right behind you, hanging from the ceiling, and kill you. We're gonna get corrected by somebody because we clearly know nothing about animals. Like <laughs> everything we're saying is just based off probably movie references and any other <laughs> pop culture we've consumed. Uh, I want uh, Mindy Irwin, if that's her name, to come to the show and be uh, be on this debate with us. Her name's not Mindy. The kid. I was talking about his wife. Bindi yeah. Irwin. I thought you were talking about his wife. What's yeah. her name? I don't remember. R.I.P. I love that show growing up. I did too. Talking to El Hunter. All right. That was a <laughs> good question. Ooh, all right. Layover. Ah, uh, yes. This gentleman. Instagram name, layover with two R's and an underscore. Submitted a couple questions. Good questions. How do you feel about doing collaborations with other brands? That was the first question. Um, totally open to it. If the brand is something that like we align with, mm-hmm. that we believe in, yeah, that uh, we like what the brand stands for, I think it'd be very cool. 
Yeah. Definitely talked about working with other brands. We love podcast guests. That'd be fun. Anything. Yeah. So totally open to that. And what makes your brand stand out from other brands? And that is a very good question. I think um, constant action is something that we do really well. We're pretty agile and we're trying new things a lot. And we don't talk a lot about it. We'll just try it if if we can do it quickly and efficiently. And if it works, keep doing it. If not, pivot. And I think the other thing is something we already touched on is patience. I think that's one thing we understand better than um, some other people. We're doing other things we can to grow as fast as we can, but we understand it takes time. So we don't get restless and fed up with, you know, we take a very organic approach to our brand and try and keep things real and develop them organically because we realize time is a major factor in developing a strong brand. Mm. So having that patience along with making powerful, you know, different moves, Mm -hmm. something that we do really well. Mm -hmm. I would say just our value on brand itself. Right. Um, Trying to actually really build a brand and grow a brand with, um, you know, a brand value and the vision of choosing happy and, you know, living life to its fullest and enjoying the adventure of life and kind of really building this foundation of a brand instead of having, um, which we've had before, but like t-shirt designs just to have t-shirt designs that will are catchy and will sell. Um, really taking the time to actually build a brand that has value and purpose. To uh, that's what I meant, like patience. Yeah. Like just we're patient. We understand great things take time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can drink a uh, Macallan 12, but if you ever stumble upon a Macana, Macallan 18, there's mm-hmm. a huge difference. Mm-hmm. That extra six years does wonders. Um, good question. Anything else on that? Nope, that was it. Those two questions. I think I'm good. Elaborate on that. All right. Um, Jonah Kapoor, what made you want to start an apparel company? Could we get tips? Uh, could we give him some tips on starting a successful one? And uh, he said he really looks up to us, so thank you for that. I appreciate that. It's always inspiring to hear. Thank you, Jonah. Um because it's something he wants to do someday. Mm-hmm. So what made us want to start an apparel company? I mean, just we had a vision to, of how we kind of want to live our life, just be able to travel, go do fun things, you know, help other people experience different experiences. And we're like, we're always wearing clothes. We understood <laughs> really we never wanted to be that. tied down by our, our product or service. Like, we can be doing anything we're pa- like, like kind of a joke, but like playing Fortnite now and streaming that on Twitch, like, that's something we enjoy doing, so mm. it's part of the brand. You know, if you're making some weird product, you know, you kind of got to keep doing things that align with selling that product. Mm. But we always knew, I think before we even realized that we knew a brand was limitless in direction, whatever mm. passions we had and lifestyle we wanted to live, it could be supported by representing the clothing, mm. you know, representing the lifestyle, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, so what do you say? Is that why we why we start it? Um, what made us want to start an apparel company? Yeah. So yeah, like that, having that freedom and autonomy to to live our life and pursue different passions and directions while still always keep promoting it. the company. Right. Because like, oh, we're always wearing clothes. You go to a concert. And why not do it? You can't yeah. it, like go to a concert. Why well, you're going to promote? Say, so start like an app. Yeah. Like, you, what are you going to do? To, or you, like, you're going to the concert to have fun, not you know. But you could be wearing your clothes and people, you know, all the time we get, oh, what's choose happy? Oh, what's that logo? You know what I mean? Constantly, whatever we're doing in living life, so mm-hmm. it's very synonymous with the free lifestyle mm-hmm. and um, the lifestyle we want to promote. Mm-hmm. You know, synonymous with the brand. I think mm-hmm. so. Um, what was the other part? Could we uh, get tips on starting a successful one? Um, like we said kind of earlier, you know, successful I think is a very abstract. Success is a very abstract concept. But I think just, um, you know, if you're happy with what you're doing, and I guess if like if you're doing it full time, that could be successful. But these are tips on starting. I think the biggest tip on starting is just that, like starting, yeah, just doing. It. I think that's the biggest tip I would give anybody is just you'll figure you if you have the drive and you're really passionate about it, you will figure everything out along the way. I mm. promise. Like just you will. find a clothing supplier that you like with the quality of clothes, and then put out a design. And you can even yeah, like it's so simple. Just start is the biggest advice I can give anybody. I don't care what it is. I want to start an app. I want to do this. The biggest step is to start. Like you want to do 100 push-ups in a day? Start with one if you can. And next day, do two. The, anything in life, if you want to do it, the best advice is action. Just mm. start. Mm. I could tell you to do this or that, but in, in the grand scheme of life, 
action trumps everything. Mm -hmm. And then second to that is the ability to pivot. Is this working? Can we be doing it better? Is something, you know, can you save money this way? Can you make more money this way? Action and pivoting is, you know, you just run these zigzag patterns through life. And, and, and to me, that that is the secret to mm -hmm. being successful in whatever mm -hmm. as abstract meaning that is to you. If you start today and you don't have it all figured out, you'll be a lot happier and learn a lot more than waiting two months because in that two months you'll learn so much and you'll be two months ahead. You don't of, have to make any money. Yeah, you you could go two twelve months, months without making any money of when you started. You can never. You can always make more money, but you can never make more time. Time is the only thing you can never get back. Mm -hmm. That and, and the like greatest... your health, like that. Those. So, so if you start today, I don't know. I don't care. That could be buying the domain or or creating the Instagram creating the Instagram account, which costs nothing. They cost nothing. They're saying this is our name and our logo. Incremental steps. People get hung up on such minuscule things. Who somebody said this and I can't remember. It's like, do you think Tim Hortons is a good name? <laughs> Does Tim Hortons make a lot of money? I don't even know what they make, but yeah, there is. As far as I'm concerned, they're a very successful business. Is Tim Hortons a marketable, cool, good name? No, the products the product is there. People get hung up on. You can always change your name. We changed our name. People get hung up on little weird mm. stuff. Start. Buy the or get the Instagram. That would be the first step. It's mm -hmm. easy. It's free. It'll take you ten minutes, and now you're in. Mm -hmm. You've committed. You've started. Mm -hmm. so, now it's next. Find a supplier. Okay. You know it, it, it's baby steps. How do you eat about elephant one bite at a time? But you got to take bites. You know, really big fork. <laughs> and with some barbecue sauce. Ooh, no one on an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> People are probably going to win it. <laughs> An elephant or no. <laughs> People are going to hate us. We're talking about like animals eating fighting, elephant, yeah. eating yeah. elephant, yeah. like a super kind of. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So I want to disclaim, we do not support animal fighting in any way or the consumption of um, elephants, exotic animals. Uh, yeah. Oh gosh. Do we have another question? Let me see. I thought we had one more. I think that was it. Oh yeah. We got them all. And we sent Mia one last week. Nice. Um, Coop, how's our time doing on our... 18. Okay. All right, we're getting ready to wrap up here. Uh, right? Friend of Screw. Friend of Screw this week. Yeah, just because we've been there... The last three, three days, days. And we do love them. Jay's Penalty Box. Yeah. In Ferndale. We didn't realize it until our roommate goes, dude, you're going there for the third night in a row. Yeah. Yeah. We love Jay's. Jay's Penalty Box in Ferndale right off of Woodward. Yeah. Got Almost the, right in the corner of Woodward and Nine It was Mile. the best new bar in Best of Detroit, what, last year? And best sports bar sports in bar. Oakland County. And then best sports bar in Oakland County. It's a great place, and especially if you want to watch some sports. So go check them out. When the Tigers hit a home run, you get Dollar, Dollar Molson's. Molson's. Yeah, pretty cool. They got sirens that go off and everything. Trivia on Wednesdays. I think tonight they have 50 Cent Wings. Scratch and Dent next Sunday. They have deals for days, boys and girls. Yeah. Deals for cool days. Cool little outdoor patio. Oh, incredible. Jay's Penalty Box. All right, well, what you got? You got something? I think that's it. Uh, this was a strange episode. We got yeah. deep. Yeah. I don't know if good that's... Good questions. So that's what we mean by good questions. You know, something that we can... That was a great springboard. But is it the questions or is it us? Or the answers. Hmm. hmm. That was a great question. Um, it was a fun episode. If you guys kind of like that style, getting more into the inside of our minds, like that's how we think and we're happy to share that stuff. But if you guys prefer some of the other style, more rapid fire, we can do that too. Just give us some feedback. We love feedback. So And keep the questions coming. Yeah, good questions. And the questions that we like the most, favorite question, yep. wins a free year. We free will announce this week's winner next episode. Mm -hmm. Probably when we post too on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Peace. We will see you next time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. All episodes of What's Your Screw are available on iTunes. And if you like the show, be sure to rate, subscribe, and leave a comment. As always, there are free stickers on our website, www.screwco.com. We'll see you guys next time.